Support for the leadoff on WGLT and WGLT.org comes from the Central Illinois Regional Airport, where Florida beaches are one flight away. Featuring nonstop service on Allegiant Airlines to Tampa St. Pete and Orlando Sanford from Bloomington. Close, convenient, CIRA. More at CIRA.com. The Bloomington Normal community steps up for the surviving sons of a Unit 5 teacher who was killed last week. That's one of the things you need to know to start your day for Monday, June 3rd. I'm Ryan Denham, and this is WGLT's The Lead Off. Now let's lead off with an online fundraiser that's already raised over a quarter of a million dollars for the three sons of slain Unit 5 teacher Amy Moore. Moore was fatally shot by her ex-husband, who then killed himself, leaving their three sons parentless. Amy Moore's oldest brother, Tom Burns, helped organize the GoFundMe fundraiser one of the biggest this community has ever seen. They've already had to raise the goal, now at $400,000. That response is such a testament to um, Bloomington Normal and the surrounding areas. It's just really unbelievable. I just, I don't think you would get this anywhere else. Burns says the three boys are staying with relatives and they've been visited by friends every day since it happened. He says the boys haven't fully grasped what this means, but they will. And I think when that hits the wall, I think it's going to be a, a whole nother level of, obviously, counseling and, and help that we're going to need, um, which is a whole other expense. So our hope is to build enough of a safety net financially that we can take care of these boys and make sure that they continue to blossom. Burns says those who'd rather make an in-person donation can contribute to the More Boys Memorial Fund set up at Heartland Bank. As WGLT reported previously, court records in Amy Moore's divorce show that she repeatedly tried to protect herself through orders of protection and other means. Her divorce from her ex-husband was finalized just days before he killed her. I think for sure the entire system let her down. I mean, this is something that, with the number of incidents we've had over the years, that they, they should have never been in the same room at the same time, ever. It should have been impossible for that to happen. You can find a link to the GoFundMe at WGLT.org. Here's some other stories we're following in the WGLT newsroom. During a visit to Central Illinois, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson says he's not concerned about the impact on the November election of the guilty verdict in former President Donald Trump's trial. Illinois lawmakers have passed a bill that would set regulations and protections on the process of carbon capture and storage, which moves CO2 into pipes and stores it underground. And authorities are investigating a crash on Interstate 74 in East Peoria on Friday that killed a 32-year-old woman from Normal. You can find more on these stories at WGLT.org. The steampunk-themed Cogs and Corsets Festival returns to downtown Bloomington next weekend, and a Twin City band who plays in a 20th century sandbox will add to that vibe with hot club jazz and swing standards. The Sweet Nothings are now Trenton Perry, Allison Tabbitt, and Joe Holland. They're committed to sharing music from the 1920s and 30s. In fact, convincing Holland to join the Sweet Nothings and stay in was a piece of cake. WGLT's Lauren Warnicke has more. My uncle was also a bass player and an upright player. So I saw this as an opportunity to, to kind of like continue, you know, the family tradition of bass playing. Once, you know, Allison got in the band and, and, and the whole thing and was kind going. Of gelled, right? yeah, and, yeah. And then, and then it's, it's, I mean, really fun to play this style of music and, and danceable music. When the whip wheels call and the evening is nigh, put her to my turn and then I want to come back to that that thread that you introduced Joe. I I guess came to be in this band because I was at the Jazz Up Front open mic. I didn't know what sort of uh, opportunities to play this sort of music there would be when I moved here to go to ISU but um, I really found really all of every music opportunity I've come by has happened through the, the Jazz Up Front open mic um, and this was one of them. I yeah no I've just I just feel like I've been lucky enough to mm-hmm link up with other great, you know, with great musicians um, and uh, get to play this style of music. I'm kind of thinking hot club jazz. I'm thinking yeah. like trad jazz. Early 20th century is the sweet spot for you all, yep. right? Why? My musical idol is Django Reinhardt. I've been into him since I was maybe like 13, 14, and I just been slowly kind of passively learning it. Um, through my teenage years and early 20s and mostly just playing it like in my living room you know mm-hmm. at my house by myself and i didn't really know there's like modern 
you know, players or people that like, like that kind of music. And so once I found other people who also were down to learn it, you know, it just kind of snowballed from that and just I'm trying to spread the music, you know. Squirrel Nut Zipper is really like popular, repopularized this style of music. And mm-hmm. I think some of the things you already pointed to, Django guitar, minor keys, right? Sometimes like odd waltzy feels. But I think it's that kind of like wah-wah on the trumpet that really, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you know, Undeniable, like yeah. dials it in. <laughs> Every trumpet player it has to be just, it's just fun. I don't know. So <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I love a yeah. plunger, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I, I've i loved like the umbrella of lots of things that fall under, you know, the word jazz um, for a long time. Um, I think I first like fell in love with jazz actually in the form of like big band music. I saw the, you know, current iteration of, you know, the ghost band of the the Count Basie band when I was like 12 or 13. And I just, I loved that. Um, And I like the, I mean, this isn't big band obviously, but I'm still taking a lot of like inspiration from like, you know, big band, like early big band trumpet playing. I like that we get to be a little goofy sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah, there's sure. this like freewheeling spirit to it. So I just think it, oh, and I love that people dance to it. I love that it's swing music is for oh, dancing. My heart's on fire. You know that I'll never tire of that low down blue drag. That's Lauren Warnke reporting. Sweet Nothings will play at the Cogs and Corsets Festival on Saturday in downtown Bloomington. Support for arts and culture coverage on WGLT comes from PNC Financial Services. PNC is committed to supporting local arts and culture events in the communities they serve. And before we let you go, the Normal Town Council meets tonight at 7 at City Hall. On the agenda are plans to hire road construction for millions of dollars in street resurfacing work. And that's it for today. I'm Ryan Denham. Subscribe to the lead off on the NPR app or wherever you get your podcasts.